This is KGW News at Sunrise. Good morning and thank you for waking up with us on this Saturday. I'm Galen Etlin. The time now is six o'clock and coming up here, some hospitals are unhappy with the COVID-19 vaccine rollout in Oregon. We're going to look at how expectations are overwhelming some staff as people wait to get their shot. Plus, the wait to reopen continues for students in Portland Public Schools. The district pushed back the return for in-person learning. We'll take you inside a local school to see how everyone is preparing. But first, Chris McGinnis joins us live at home with the forecast. Good morning, Chris. Good morning and happy Saturday to you, Galen, and everyone at home. Thanks for joining us. Let's take you live right now to the Oregon coast where it is dark. <laughs> Still dark, but quiet, and uh, we do expect a really nice day at the Oregon coast this morning. After uh, the little bit of fog that we have out there this morning lifts, we should have a good deal of sunshine there. We'll switch gears, take you up to Timberline right now. It is clear. Decent amount of snow on the ground. It'll be a busy day and a busy weekend up there with snow in our forecast tonight and tomorrow. We'll talk more about that in a minute. And it's cold. Last check at PDX now. We have slipped to 29 degrees with a calm wind and clear sky overhead. That has set the stage for another very frosty morning here across much of the Willamette Valley. It's 28 in Scappoose, 30 in Woodland right now. Beaverton waking up to 29. Hillsboro at 25, one of the colder spots west of the mountains. And over on the uh, eastern part of the state, we're in the upper 20s in Baker City, John Day Bend right now, sitting at 20, or excuse me, 19 degrees. All right, the plan for today. Patchy fog this morning. Whatever fog that we have clears up pretty quickly. So this should be a really nice day. And also, Maybe our nicest day in a while because the weather pattern turns showery and of course a lot of talk about it getting colder and the snow in the forecast for some of us. We do have winter weather advisories above 1,000 feet for all of the areas you see here shaded in purple. I will break this down in more detail uh, coming up in just a bit. That snow, that rain snow mix uh, arrives later tonight and into tomorrow. More on that in just a bit. Galen? Well, lots going on. Chris, thank you so much. We'll see you in a few minutes. Mm -hmm. We do have some breaking news this morning. Famous broadcaster Larry King is dead. The former host appeared on radio, TV and digital media for 63 years. He's well known by anyone who sat in the hot seat for his direct and sometimes unfiltered questions. Reps for King posted the update on Twitter just before five this morning. Now King went to the hospital a couple weeks ago because of COVID-19, but this morning it is unclear if that is why he died. Funeral arrangements and memorial services will be announced in the coming days. King was 87 years old. Back locally now, we are following frustration at Oregon hospitals over the supply and demand of COVID-19 vaccines. As the governor expands eligibility, hospitals want you to understand you might have to wait longer than you think. Catherine Cook explains. Managing vaccine expectations. When they are eligible, it may take weeks or even months to actually schedule an appointment. Becky Hultberg is president and CEO of the Oregon Association of Hospitals and Health Systems. She's concerned that Governor Brown's latest timeline for vaccinating Oregonians will create demand that the state simply won't be able to meet with its vaccine supply. We support those goals, but we also believe that we need to be realistic with the supply that we have and not give people false hope. The Oregon Health Authority released this new vaccination timeline. Beginning January 25th, teachers will be eligible for the vaccine. On February 7th, people 80 and older will be eligible, with progressively younger seniors added in the weeks that follow. By February 28th, seniors 65 and older will be eligible. But the timeline projects that by May, just 78% of teachers and seniors will have gotten the shot. I think there's a recognition that this is going to take a long time. I'm just not sure it's been explained well to the public. And we don't want people to expect something that they're not going to be able to have for a, some, in some cases, weeks and maybe even months. On Friday, Governor Brown defended her plan to vaccinate educators ahead of seniors, saying she's using every tool to get kids back in the classroom this year. It deserves being said again. The long term mental health, social, emotional and academic impacts of our kids being out of the classroom are significant. Holtberg said, to be clear, the association's concern is not with how the governor is prioritizing the vaccine. It's with overexpanding eligibility and the community's expectations. So it's really hard to be put in a position where we know so many people are anxious to get the vaccine and we know we're not going to have the supplies to deliver it to everybody when they want it. Catherine Cook, KGW News. 
Now, the path to a vaccine is a little clearer for one group, though. Teachers and others connected to schools in the Portland area will be contacted early next week by their districts. They'll get an online link to sign up for a COVID shot. Nearly all of those vaccinations will happen at the Oregon Convention Center. The mass vaccination site will start giving shots to educators next Wednesday. Despite that news, some schools are pushing back reopening. Lake Oswego schools announced students will not be back in the classroom until at least February 4th. In a letter to parents, the superintendent said this. After listening to compelling rationale from our teachers and staff, consulting with local public health authorities, coordinating with vaccine distribution leads, and weighing operational log logistics, Lake Oswego needs to change the start for returning elementary students to a later date in February. We're now waiting to hear what that date will be. Portland Public Schools was supposed to start Monday, but now the district says most schools will start the week after for students who need the most help. We've got to check out safety measures, though, inside Harriet Tubman Middle School in North Portland. There are signs all over reminding people to wear masks and stay socially distant. Throughout the hallways, there are markings on the ground telling students which way they should be walking. Desks are spaced apart, and there are rooms called symptom spaces. That's where students and adults can go if they show any symptoms of COVID. So in our symptom spaces, we'll have standalone air purifiers to just that it's an added measure of uh, safety in those rooms. And then uh, we're running our uh, HVAC systems uh, for longer during the day. We have a uh, industrial hygienist that we consult with that is uh, looking at all of our spaces. Now this is a list here of the schools that will be expected as part of this first phase of limited in-person learning. It includes 16 elementary schools, two high schools, and a couple alternative schools. The district is still working on more middle schools that might be involved. Now, this comes as health officials reported 877 new cases of COVID and 22 more people who died. Nearly 137,000 Oregonians have caught the virus since the pandemic started. You can see on this graph, it's starting to trail back down as we move away from the holidays. 1,865 Oregonians have now died from COVID. And here's something that really caught our attention here. Data show 947 people died in November and December compared to 724 deaths between March and October. So that's more than half of Oregon's total deaths. 56% happened in the last two months of 2020. So in Oregon, who will get the next shot after teachers and those over 65? A committee is still working on that, and two groups are at the top of its list. BIPOC, which is black, indigenous, and people of color, and people who have chronic conditions that put them more at risk. A big question some asked in this committee, is it even legal to set priority for the vaccine by race? We're not picking, for example, the BIPOC communities because they're ethnic or because they're black or Latino, because They've been impacted so severely by COVID. To me, whatever we do is driven by data. The state is reviewing the legality of this list. The committee meets again next Thursday to review final recommendations for the governor, and we'll let you know what they decide. All right, well, Chris McGinnis has your forecast coming up here and also still ahead this morning. The time to clean up clutter from last year is fast approaching, and it doesn't have to break the bank. We've got some tips on the best products that will help you transform your home for 2021.